right, let's look at what is long-term and short-term disability. This is one of those videos that young people especially will skip because they don't think it's very important. And yet I've known people who are in their 20s who suffered a disability that ended up costing them quite a bit of money. As a case in point, they suffered a disability for, let's say, an eight-month period of time in which that eight months they could have collected up to $40,000, but they didn't. And they just kind of became a burden on family and friends and uh, didn't really think about how that impacted other people. So one of the things about disability insurance is that when you are considering disability insurance, and if you work for an employer, oftentimes they cover it, but you want to make sure they do, what you're really thinking about is how you can avoid pulling resources away from people around you, right? The goal here is not to suck out resources from your family or your friends. Um, they have their life, they have to worry about their things. It's how you can make sure that you've covered that responsibility. Okay, so in the United States, generally employers cover this insurance. Some of them will cover long term and they'll let you cover short term. What you want to do is you want to look at when the long term takes over. If it's three months, six months, etc., then you might want to go ahead and pay for a short term disability insurance that takes over usually after I think a good uh, a good length of time is about 60 days. Okay, short term covers a shorter uh, length, usually it's two or fewer years, while long term can cover until you've retired. And I believe the uh, retirement age for many of them is considered to be 67. Okay, uh, Short term also generally offers a small benefit. Um, they usually have caps, so as a case in point, one of the ones that I've used in the past, its short term cap I believe is 4000 a month. Okay, Whereas the long term plan was, I think, 12,000 a month. Now, it's also based on a percent of income. Usually they'll say they don't pay more than 50% of whatever your income was before the disability. And then it goes up to a certain amount. So it's like, we're going to pay you 50% of your income. But if your income was 100,000 a month, we're only going to pay up to, let's say, uh, 10,000. Okay. And both of these plans may offer additional benefits. In the world of insurance, these are called riders. You can get them added to your insurance policy. They may cost, for instance, a very good one to have would be a cost of living adjustment. One of the things that I would ask if you're signing up for disability insurance is ask them, how do you estimate the cost of living? Are you using the CPI, for instance? If that's the case, that's a red flag. CPI is very inaccurate, okay? You want to make sure that their cost of living uh, isn't what the government's using because the government is very deceptive, as I'll get into in a second. All plans will have a maximum amount of income provided. For instance, if you make $25,000 a month before a permanent disability, you may only receive up to $10,000 a month in benefits. Okay. Same thing with short-term is generally going to be more restricted. So if you have short-term covering you the first 90 days, let's say, and you're only getting, let's say, 4000 a month, well, then when it goes to the long term, you may get more money because the long term is better than the short term. Okay? Um, however, these plans are superior to anything offered by the government. Here's why. Although people can get on disability from the government, <laughs> the government dishonestly reports inflation. So what they do, it's, it's very clever, is you become dependent on them, but then they're able to steal money from even these people by misreporting inflation. So you actually end up getting poorer and poorer every year. So even if you're getting, let's say, $800 in disability a month from the government, which is not very much money at all, well, and they'll say, okay, we're gonna give you a cost of living of 1%, but the actual cost of living increased by three or 4%. And it's this invisible tax that they can get more money from you and rob you of more. And so what ends up happening is people who are on government disability plans end up over a few period uh, of years end up in severe poverty because it's it's these plans are not good at all. So long-term and short-term disability, the hope is that you're never disabled. But I have seen a lot of 20-year-olds who thought that they would never have anything happen to them. They lost eight to almost a full eight months to almost a full year of time based on some medical issue. And in this case, they would have ended up having about forty to fifty thousand dollars in their pocket by having this insurance. But because of their arrogance, thinking that this will never happen to me because I'm young, they ended up losing out on that. 
Some employers will require that you pay. If you're a business owner, this is mandatory. I mean, again, who are you, who are you gonna fall back on if you become disabled? If you just think family, consider that they may resent the fact that you're not, you haven't prepared for these type of situations. This is how you express that you care about the people around you is you actually have yourself protected in these cases. Even if you live with family, you still are bringing in some income to pay them for their care. So this is what long-term and short-term disability insurance are. I would highly suggest either speaking with your employer, if you're a business owner, uh, looking at policies. Um, you can speak to an insurance broker and they'll usually get you some information about um, which policies may help you out. Probably, I think the most common one that I know of is Mutual of Omaha because that's usually who employers use.